Hello and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. In this video I'll be talking about thin layer chromatography. I'll include the general setup, the purpose, the applications and the exam question history in this video. If you would like however to be taken to a video that really concentrates on how thin layer chromatography can be used to monitor the progress of a chemical reaction then click the eye at the top of the screen now and you'll find a link to a video that covers exactly that. Otherwise, let's get started. TLC, or thin layer chromatography, is a separation technique. It has a mobile phase and a stationary phase and utilizes these to examine all the different components of a mixture. The chromatogram we get at the end will have a series of spots that move up towards the top and it allows us to see how many individual components we may have. It doesn't tell us perfectly all the time how many we have, as some of the different components may be very similar to each other and interact with the stationary and mobile phases in the same way. We can also use TLC to monitor the progress of a chemical reaction, but I'll talk about that later. The general procedure for using a TLC plate is very simple. We draw a pencil line about one centimeter up from the base of the plate. Now we call this the baseline. You must use a pencil because if you use an ink, it could be soluble in the solvent and start to travel with the spots, which are the components of the mixture. Now we create an initial spot of our sample, which is our mixture, on the baseline that we've just drawn in pencil. We need to create a concentrated spot. So we use a capillary tube to do a small spot of our sample, let it dry, and then add more of the sample from the capillary tube, repeating this process and allowing it to dry each time. The plate is then added to a beaker. There is a small amount of solvent at the bottom of this beaker, which mustn't cross the baseline. The solvent will then start to rise up and naturally cross the baseline as it moves across the TLC plate. You will then see that the different components of the mixture start to separate out and travel up the plate. We allow the solvent to get pretty close to the top but not quite ever leave the plate and we call the point where the solvent gets up to the solvent front. We can refer to the TLC plate after the experiment is finished as the chromatogram. And when we look at the chromatogram, what we would notice is different spots all the way up the plate, starting from the baseline at the bottom. Now these different spots represent the different components of the initial mixture that we placed on the baseline. How far the different components have moved up the plate will depend on how they interact with the mobile and stationary phases. Let's start by looking at the mobile phase. Now because our mobile phase is a solvent, we can talk about how the different components of the mixture might be soluble in the mobile phase. So for example, if we imagine that our mobile phase solvent is water, then how soluble something is in water will determine how far up the plate it travels. Alcohols, for instance, are very soluble in water because they can form hydrogen bonds. And so as a result, if an alcohol was one of the components of the mixture that we placed on the baseline, then we would expect the alcohol component spot to travel quite far up the plate. We can say that it has a large RF value that I'll talk about shortly. Similarly, let's say one of the components of the mixture was an alkane. Alkanes are not very soluble in water. And so as a result, an alkane component spot wouldn't have traveled very far from the baseline at all. As you can see at the bottom of the screen now, there is an equation for calculating the RF value that is allocated to the different component spots as they travel up the TLC plate. The RF value is the distance traveled by the component, and we measure from the middle of the spot, divided by the distance traveled by the solvent, which we call the solvent front. These RF values, if we know the solvent, can be compared to database values to try and identify the particular components of the mixture. 
The other factor that determines how far one of the component spots travels across the TLC plate is how attracted the component is to the stationary phase. Now I don't need to use the term soluble here because our stationary phase is solid. But if one of our components was very attracted to the stationary phase, then it wouldn't travel very far across it. This would give it a small RF value and we would notice the spot quite close to the baseline. Similarly, if however we had a component that was not very attracted to the stationary phase, then it would travel quite far across the TLC plate and we'd notice those spots nearer the solvent front at the top. That would give those spots quite a large RF value. I mentioned before how you could use thin layer chromatography to monitor the progress of a chemical reaction. As the reaction is taking place, you would take small samples out of the mixture and run them as a mixture spot at the baseline on a TLC plate, just like I described earlier in this video. However, on either side of this spot, you would also run spots for the reactants and the products. You would then be able to compare the different components of your mixture with the known reactants and products and estimate the proportions of each. This allows you to estimate the progress of your chemical reaction. Don't forget there is a video that you can also be taken through that discovers this in more detail. If you just click the eye at the top of the screen right now, then you'll be taken straight to that video by clicking the link that comes on screen. What you can see on screen now is a time lapse of a TLC plate that I ran. On the right hand side there's quite a good red component spot that seems to move up quite quickly because it was very soluble in the water. Similarly there's a yellow spot that moves on the left hand side which was actually from a purple ink that was placed on the baseline. You can see there are other components of the exact same spot that don't travel very far at all. Perhaps those components weren't very soluble in the mobile phase or were very attracted to the stationary phase. Full disclosure for this one, I never once claimed to be good at chromatography, but the brown ink spot that's on the left hand side of this chromatogram clearly didn't travel very well at all. What I would do if I wanted to examine that further is try a different solvent perhaps to see if that gives me a much better spread of the different components of that mixture. Here's a still of the actual chromatograms that I got at the end and I left the one on the left for a bit too long but I really wanted to see how many different component spots there were of each of the mixtures I placed at the bottom. This is the general gist of what they look like but in the exam you'd be given really clear grey images to work with for this. That's once again all I have for you in this video. Please make sure to click the links on screen to be taken to different follow-up videos on chromatography right now, or you can click the eye at the top of the screen to be taken to a relevant playlist or that all-important TLC monitoring the progress of a reaction video. Happy revising.